running out of ideas. I wasn't creative anymore. I was making videos for the sake of making videos. He's been telling me this for years. I'm like, Graham, what type of video are you going to be posting this Wednesday? Like, nothing's happening in the markets. And he's like, just another passive income video. You said the main channel was your baby. You yeah. edited, you put out what, three like, videos a week for years. Yeah. And now this podcast, this is priority numero it is. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. We resolve most things with coin flips. What the f guys, a coin flip? My income was decided on a coin flip. Have there been moments of insight your realization that have changed how you think. Hmm. Graham Stephan and Jack Selby host the Iced Coffee Hour, a top podcast with about a million followers featuring guests like Alex Ramosi, Bobby Lee, and Hassan Piker. Before the podcast, Graham was a multi-millionaire personal finance YouTuber and real estate agent. Jack Selby was a busboy who cold emailed Graham asking to work for him. How did Jack convince Graham to partner with him as equals on the Iced Coffee Hour? Why is Graham quiet quitting his main YouTube channel to focus on the podcast? And how did they triple in size this past year? Find out today on the Carrot Podcast. This pod is sponsored by me. I help build this cool new tool, Carrot Insights. If you're a creator, Carrot helps you manage your financials and compare how you're doing against peers. More on this later and link in description below. Jack and Graham, thanks so much for making time today. The Iced Coffee Hour podcast you two have started, you've exploded over the past year. You're what, at 930,000 subscribers? A little bit more than Caleb Hammer, I think. Uh, no, all Caleb is beating us by a hundred and... So we're in this race with Caleb Hammer right now, and we're both at the exact same amount of subscribers, and sometimes he'll gain a few hundred on us, we'll gain a few hundred on him. Right now, he's in the lead by about 120 subscribers. Yeah, I did check right before, precisely 928,000 for yeah. each of you, but he's 100 subscribers ahead. Yeah. What blows my mind, though, is you started this podcast almost four years ago, four years May, May 2020. Yeah. And it's really in the past year that you almost tripled a subscriber count. So you had like some steady growth, like 100k here, and then you absolutely blew the top off. What changed? You know what it was? It was our talk in New York. That's what it was. That was the, the start of it. So Jack and I had this talk as we were walking through New York in the winter, and it was snowing, and we had like this great discussion. You remember this, Jack? I, that I was remember, it, We man. had a lot of discussions on yeah, that New York trip. That was it. And I was telling Jack, hey, listen, man. Uh, I think we should like go a hundred percent on the podcast and like, this is it. Cause I think at the time you were doing some other stuff on the side, you were doing like the, like, you know, sponsorship thing. I was, I don't know that. I think we were just rounding that out. We yeah. were finishing that up. I was doing the second channel as well and yeah. a bunch of other random miscellaneous tasks, but we really wanted to hone in on the podcast. Yeah. I and remember. I think I mentioned something like, dude, I, I could go all in on this thing Oh yeah, and, and travel. And for me, the main channel was was my like baby yeah it, that took pr a priority over anything and so a lot of times i could be like i can't do this podcast and i can't go here because i got to get a main channel video out mm. and i told jack i'll make this the priority and we go anywhere at any time and i'll do it I that was it i remember wow. because i yeah. felt like i was bottlenecked as far as the work went on the iced coffee hour because we couldn't travel to certain guests and i felt like that was really limiting ourselves mm. and then graham was like he was like all right i'll tell you what we can make this a priority and i'm like perfect amazing 100 percent. i'm all in on this and then we can go and we can finally start traveling to guests and that's what we've really done for most of our episodes in the past year yeah two years ago there'd be no way i'd be able <clears> to do this on a thursday right. This would have have to have been on probably a Sunday because that would have been the only day I'd have time to do anything. And a lot of our guests, too, would have to come to us. And it just wasn't conducive because then we were just reliant on the people who were willing to come to Vegas. And mm. as soon as I was like, Let, let's make the podcast priority and go anywhere. Um, and even the podcast we did before this, we found out about it yesterday. And yeah, you just like, came in. There yeah. would have never been a world a couple of years ago where Graham could have ever made that. Wow. Answer. That's true. What totally changed where you said the main channel was your baby. You yeah. edited, you put out what, like three videos a week? Three videos a week. For years. Yeah. And now this podcast, this is priority numero it is. I got tired of it, to be honest with you. I got so tired. I felt like I was running out of ideas. I wasn't creative anymore. I was making videos for the sake of making videos. And a lot of it was like a pride thing where I didn't want to stop because I'm like, I work so hard to do this thing. I'm in a position that so many people would love to be in. I felt like I wouldn't be appreciative of that if I stopped posting because I'm like, it's a waste. Like people yeah. would love to be in this. Like why? It's it's easy to keep making videos and to keep pushing through. So I found myself just pushing through, even though I knew that probably wasn't the right thing to keep doing. Is just keep making videos for the sake of the algorithm. 
Like it's like feeding a flame. It's like, oh, uh, the more the more, you know, what I throw at the flame, the mm. bigger it's going to get. And the bigger it is, the better it's going to be. I just it got to the point. I was sick of it. It's like there's this huge sunk cost and you have to hit a certain level of misery that prompts you <laughs> to look and be like, maybe I should change. Was there a specific video or moment you were like, I can't do this anymore? Every year I've, I've said it. Every year. for <laughs> He's like, been telling me this for years. Just I'm like, like, I'm like Graham, what type of video are you going to be posting this Wednesday? I like, know nothing's happening in the markets. And he's like, just another passive income video. Side, and I see side like the, the desperation in his eyes. It's like yeah. just pure You sad. know what? But I think a lot of things took a toll on that because it was so focused. If if it was Monday and I had to post a video on Wednesday and nothing happened in the market, I was so irritable. Like you couldn't talk to me. You couldn't distract me. I was just like in my head, even at night, let's just say 10 mm-hmm. p.m. at night, like I'm fully kind of checked out. I would be irritable because I'd be in my head thinking, what's the Wednesday topic? How do I make this good for the people who watch the Monday video? If I didn't have anything, it was bad. It was all I would think about. And I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't see friends. I would just think, what's the best topic for Wednesday? And it just, I could put up with it for some time. But yeah, 2020, I I said I was going to go down and maybe stop. And then COVID happened and I kept going. Then I think in 2021, I was thinking, oh, okay, I'll just keep going to April of 2022. And then then I, I just said, well, let's go to the end of the year. Mm. And then I thought, well, let's just do one more year. And so I just kept putting it off and off and off. But I'm at a point now where I've just stopped caring. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, what was that like for you starting pushing <laughs> Graham to begin the podcast in 2020, getting parts of your time, not the full focus, watching him steadily decline in spirits and morale, and then Finally, you got him to switch over. If you're a creator, Carrot just launched this new insights tool that analyzes your socials and financials to calculate how much you're making today and how much more you could be making. You can compare your earnings to that of other creators like you and see on average how much they make and how they're making it, whether it's AdSense, brand deals, merch, or courses. For this channel, I learn compared to other podcasters of similar size, I'm lagging behind in growth rate and brand deal earnings, so I know how to improve. Try for free via link in description below because Carrot's mission is to help handle the business side of being a creator. Now back to the podcast. And then finally, you got him to switch over. So it felt super good because the podcast for me has really like, I mean, from a realistic perspective, it's all that I cared about. It's like I had other work that needed to be done, like the second channel and all these other side stuff. But the podcast was all I really actually cared about. And finally, when he was like, all right, well, I can go all in on the podcast. I knew that one of the main limiting factors was just Graham's ability to be present somewhere else to film with someone else. And then obviously, I just it felt felt really good because I I also that we had these frustrating conversations for a long time where Graham was like, you need to increase productivity on the podcast. You need to do more on the podcast, more and more and more. But I knew for a fact I could p- double my effort on the podcast and it was already a lot of effort and the results just wouldn't have came because mm. Graham wouldn't, like the availability of Graham was our main limiting factor. So that also like eased a lot of that stress off of me where I felt like I was inadequate because I kept hearing from so many people, oh, you need to put in more and more and more and more. And I knew it wouldn't have amounted to anything. I've noticed too a shift in the guests and direction of the podcast as well over the past yeah, year. Well, that I owe to Jack. Mm, it's Jack's doing. It's Lots a of lot more political well, commentary. Let's, 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 okay, let's, let's, let's put that figure this Jack. out for a second. So <laughs> it's not necessarily political. It's just a broader podcast in totality. Like we had on a psychiatrist. That wasn't necessarily political. We didn't talk about finances at all. And it did over a million views for us. Yeah. We got to the point with the Ice Coffee Hour where we would bring people on, similar to Caleb Hammer, we'd do like a financial audit. We would just talk to them about their financial journey. And then after a while, I wasn't enthused about it. And I don't think Graham was super enthused about it either. It's like, okay, well, we know that they're doing well. Mm. They would be our high performing videos, but- it's the same story and it doesn't like spur that in- excitement and intrigue in ourselves. We weren't super passionate about it. I was super passionate about other things like politics, psychology, philosophy, et cetera. And then also when we brought on Hormozy for the first time, 
the, the episode exploded for us. But one of the things people really appreciated about the episode was this long philosophical discussion at the end of the episode. And I would say that was like the seed in my brain was like, okay, well, we can now mm. talk about other topics than just like people's financial journey throughout their life. And then we've just opened it up to wherever we find interest. You mentioned Jack's been pushing a lot more on this. And yeah. I remember you've said there have been guests you wanted to bring on where Graham, you were kind of like, oh, was, yeah. We won't I, say I, any of the names, yeah, but there are like certain people that I, I 100% want to bring on, but he vetoes. Yeah, I'm definitely very safe. And I think who you have on the podcast, people, whether it's right or not, people say you associate with their line of thinking. So if we have someone on who thinks, you know, the sky is red, even if I disagree with that, the fact that I am platforming this person who believes the sky is red must mean that I support his views that the sky is red. Mm. I think everyone deserves a place to speak their mind, and I like to hear other perspectives, even if I disagree with it. I'm pretty indifferent on a lot of things, but I've been very safe about like, hey, this person has some stuff that, you know, maybe I don't want to align with, I don't agree with them, and then I kind of think what value can they add? And so if they're on the podcast, I do believe that they have some value that they can add in one way or another, but yeah. Jack has pushed me out of my comfort zone a lot to talk about topics that I would never talk about before. I'm particularly intrigued. I think in addition to, Graham, you deciding to go full-time, Jack, you pushing to bring on a broader nature of guests, I think the third huge contributor to your success is the Jack and Graham relationship. It's a good one. It's a good relationship. We've got a great knock relationship. On, on. And I will say, our relationship yeah. now, I mentioned this to Graham recently, I think it's like the healthiest it's ever been. And our relationship has never been toxic. It's always been very healthy. Yeah. But there was a time, and I don't want to go into like a tangent or anything, we were in my fam's apartment in New York. And I remember we were sitting around playing Catan with all of these people that are like, you know, my age and stuff. And Graham's kind of hanging in there. And he's like, <laughs> he's, like get, he's like That's tired. He's fight. getting ready for bed. And I just look over at Graham and I'm like, Dude, I appreciate the fact that Graham is like hanging out, just <laughs> just like like being a friend. You know what I mean? And we're in New York together. We've been attacking this for years. And here we are. We've just found ourselves right here. And I felt myself like for some reason that thought just like made me so much closer to him. And not in like a, wow. a weird way, obviously. Yeah. But I don't know. And 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 it really made me recognize the fact that like, like we used to kind of have these little scuffles every once in a while and yeah. we'd have to like debate about or argue even about a certain topic. But recently, we really haven't like argued probably for the past year. I don't know much of what we argue about really. It's probably if anything, it's probably like a, a work thing of just like it was hey, always work. It was never yeah. personal. But what I love, I've yeah. seen you two, I mean, 20 minutes ago, two hours ago, you guys were disagreeing where Jack, you were like, hey, Graham, help me with the podcast. But it's so healthy. You literally just say it. It's expressed. Neither of you takes offense. I took offense. Jack should have told me that he needed my help. If you don't tell me, you don't need my help. You took offense to that? I'm deeply offended. Graham, okay, so we got, we got here. But remember when I said it in the car? We were driving over here. No, I'm sorry. Macy, his fiance, was driving Graham and I over here. And I said to Graham, hey, by the way, our guest is coming shortly after we arrive at the Carrot House. So we need to make sure that we have our responsibilities delegated. I'm like, you do the cameras, I'll do the audio. Mm. And then we get here and Graham does his cellular device and Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> and I do the cameras and the audio, I'm like, like I don't even care. I'm, I'll happily set up everything. It doesn't bother me whatsoever from an egoic perspective, but it does bother me the fact that, like, hey, this might not be set up perfectly in time. Mm. I said, I set up the cameras. In fairness, I thought they looked pretty good. This, what happened with this camera? Was it, it was a little oh, too, a little, too dark? A little too, it was too a, bright. Oh, it was too bright. It right, was too bright. Right. See, this dynamic, I almost feel like it's like this odd couple roommate. <laughs> like you see it in movies. We've been a lot of things. Not a couple, but Not we've, a been, couple. we've been a lot of things. But you started in a different capacity where, Graham, you hired Jack to help him with mailing lists. Mm -hmm. And so how did Jack slowly grow in respect Eat my way and trust in your mind to today where he's not only a friend, he's a full business partner on the podcast. Yeah. Well, when I initially started doing like the email management and the, the lists and everything, I knew that I wanted to make this more of a partnership than I wanted to make it like an employee-employer relationship. So he actually offered me payment for my first job or task or chore that I was given. But I was like, no, 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 I'm just here to help you out. I want to provide value to you as much as I can. And also fortunate, I was living with my parents. So I didn't really have big bills to pay. I was working as a busser as well, and that supported me. And I was happy to give him all of my time and efforts and energy to help his business run as best it can. And then I think over the long term, I kind of like 
reinforce this idea that, hey, like I am in it for the business, not just in it for like the check next Friday. And I think over time, we just ended up becoming really close friends. And then also my income is derived from businesses that I originated the idea from. Mm. So for example, like all of my income at this present moment is from the iced coffee hour. And the iced coffee hour was something that I came up with the idea with. I sourced all of the audio equipment. I came up with all of the outlines. I came up with like all of that stuff. And so I think like, like that's how it ended up. I kind of solidified myself in the business partnership thing is like you expect very little up front and just provide value and then create profitable tangential businesses and then take equity in those. Graham, how did you take this when a buster reaches out to you and says, I'm going to be business partners with you? Or rather, he never said just, business. He just said, I, I, I just want to help, help you. Yeah, yeah. he just said, I want to help. I was busy. Um, I didn't have time to do Facebook emails, and I just gave Jack a task. He did it really quickly. And this was a task that I was trying to get people to do for like a month. And I was at the Oppenheim group. I would ask, like, because uh, there was like a kind of like a half intern in there and some people that work there part time, just like getting started. I would ask them and I offer like, hey, would you do this like 20 bucks an hour or something? You could just do it when you're downtime. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then a week later, hey, how's it going? Oh, man, no, I didn't have time to do that. So Jack emails me and does it in like a day. And so that kind of sparked it. And that was around the same time I was doing my second channel, the Graham Stephan show, where I wanted people to uh, come on and like call in and I give them, you know, my thoughts on whatever the situation was. Mm -hmm. And I asked Jack, and I just said, hey, would you mind filtering through these emails? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And he has a good eye, I think, for what does well on YouTube. Um, and that's something I think as a viewer, like, you really appreciate that. And when did you start to see Jack as a friend? Oh, immediately. Graham saw me as a friend immediately. Immediately, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. To me, the line, the line is blurred between, like, right. Business partner or mm -hmm. like employee and friend, like even with Alex, yeah, like instantly it was just like friend. Mm. I, I never thought of Alex even like uh, as someone who like works under me or anything. it was always just like a friend, a friend who gets mm. to work with you. Like to me, that's always how it's been. I've never, I love that, understood anything other than that. Yeah, I'm the same way. I yeah. do business with people who I'm friends with. I've become friends with people I do business with yeah. because it all sort of blends together. So between the two of you. When did you feel the most excited about working together? As you look on your four-year-plus history, when did you feel most frustrated? That's a good question. The most excited to work together? I mean, it was probably like that first time when he reached out to me. I remember mm. I was in the car with my girlfriend at the time, and Graham calls me, and I see it's from like an LA-based number, and I think it's Graham, and I, I answer it, and I'm like, hello? And he's like, hi, this is Graham Stefan. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember I said that. And I was, I was like, <laughs> I so know. like, like it, it put me in like a trance. I was like, this is the guy I watch online. Like I get all of my like, you know, financial <laughs> knowledge from this guy. I opened up a credit card because of him. I want to open up a Roth IRA because of him. He like made this tangible impact on my life. And now I'm talking with him and I get the opportunity to help him help more people. Mm. It's like, oh, this is, this is amazing. So I would say like, but obviously every single day I'm grateful and appreciative of you know, the relationship that we have together. And like, there's nothing like that initial excitement, but still I feel like, you know, thrilled yeah. every day. And what about the most frustrated? There's nothing that comes to mind. I've been thinking about this uh, the entire time. You know what? I will say sometimes my one pet peeve, I'll be looking at Airbnbs and now Jack is like cheaper than I am. And he'll want to do like the dumpiest place. And I'm like, Jack, it's an extra hundred dollars that we're splitting and that's before tax. And so it's like an extra $30. We get like a nicer place. Jack's like, oh, no, we don't really need that, though. So the tables have kind of turned. The tables have that. turned because he used yeah. to be that way. Yes, I, I would absolutely. He was the frugal one. But now I'm like, Jack, it's pointless. It's 30 bucks. Like, stop this. It's like $30. Come on. It's usually like 100 but. Well, a hundred dollars. <laughs> but, but, our, but our enjoyment of the place goes from like a three to a nine. Like. Okay, so Big. I not that I would just want to let that slide. Yeah. I, I will see that as like a business trip. So I'm usually just like, hey, we're in and out. We're just there to sleep and then we got to get on, on the road. You know what I mean? So I think of it like it's literally a bed. If this was something where we're like trying to take our time and enjoy it, then I think I could justify mm. spending more. But if it's just a bed, it's a bed. And how have you navigated your personalities on air as you were as co-host? I remember when I watched some of their earlier iced coffee hour pods. Jack, you're not talking as much. Mm -hmm. Mostly Graham. Yeah, but that was mostly finance. 
Mm. So when we come in finance topics, I'm the one I feel yeah. like who's like really into it. And they come on knowing that they're going to talk to me about like their credit score and where they're investing. Now that we're going into more like political topics, I feel Jack has a better grasp on that than I do. I, I'm pretty clueless on a lot of issues that are going on today that Jack is more like in tune with. So I, part of me is like, I don't want to sound like an idiot. So I like to inquire, but I don't like to be the one that prompts specific you know, questions. What's really interesting is that Graham and my interests are like completely separate. Like mm. the only thing that we really have, like binding our interests together is like the general financial stuff. Um, so in the beginning, yeah, when most of our discussions were financially based, like he's the expert. Right. Why am I going to be talking? There's no, there's no point in that, you want to obviously. Talk about it. And if people are talking about commercial real estate in Las Vegas, it's like, okay, I'm, let's be real here. I'm a 25 year old guy. I don't even own a rental property. Why should I be talking on this subject? He's successful in real estate. I'll let him top, I'll let him have the floor. Um, and I, I don't think I am near the level of knowledge with like, you know, philosophy or politics and stuff like that, but that's mostly where my personal interests lie. And, uh, I read a lot of books and I watch a lot of videos and stuff like that. And so I usually I'll, I'll talk more during those discussions. Yeah. I've noticed too, in comments, there's often dynamic where Graham, in the past, sometimes you'd be talking about how stressed you are, how focused you are in editing. And there'd almost be people being like, Graham, you've got to like chill and relax, be more like Jack. Like as much of the focus was on the guest, it would actually just be on the two of you interacting with each other through the guest almost. Sometimes we use the guest as a mediator or a therapist. <laughs> I, or mean, or like, yeah, I mean, basically, <laughs> we're like, yo, we've had this disagreement. Let, let's get your thoughts. Oh, we've but done it's that worked, a lot. But yeah. it's worked a lot. You know, we get some really great insights. Well, when you've done this, what usually are there topics that you're mediating through the guest? Usually it's a workflow issue or a guest issue. It's a, mm. it's a work issue. A lot of it's abundance versus scarcity mentality. Mm. A lot of Love it was that. the pressure that I felt from Graham because he is such an intense Pita from uh, Dr. K, Healthy Gamer. Remember he says you're pita. What, what's, you, what's a pita? Pita is someone who can like put their head down to the to the grindstone or whatever the term is. Yeah, and you could just yeah. grind from like morning till night every single day doing very like similar things. Uh, I'm very much the opposite. And so like I work very hard in small stints and then I take mm. a long break and it needs to be different things that, that I'm working on all the time. Uh, and this was, I feel like a hard thing for Graham to understand. It was really hard for me to understand where Graham was coming from because his life on a day-to-day -day basis sounds like something I would never want to do. And my life, I'm sure on a day-to-day -day basis sounds like something he would never want to do. Yeah. And so I feel, feel like this was always a strong like barrier for our relationship. But as time has progressed, we've, we've learned to understand it. Especially to, I mean, Graham, the fact that you're even shifting focus from this constant three upload a week channel mm -hmm. indicates a little bit more of the, what is it, the Vata mindset? The Vata. Yeah. yeah. It's like a little bit more willing to try something risky, a little less scared of, hey, I have to constantly be on this. Yeah. I'm curious, Jack, what are things that you think Graham has influenced you? This has been a slight insecurity of mine because I like to see myself as somebody who sees reality for what it is rather than through my, my, the lens of a life that I have acquired where I like have, you know, some, the reality is obscured through the way that I'm looking at it. Graham is extremely good at speaking about things in terms of this is the way that they are. And I often talk about this is the way that they should be, but that doesn't really take you anywhere. You can complain about all the external situations and circumstances that someone's in or that you're in, but it doesn't necessarily make any progress. And Graham's like, yeah, but this is the way that it is. So we have to do it this way. And I feel like he's done a really good job at impressing upon me the the idea of like, hey, let's let's hold back our emotions and look, let's look at this from like a very honest and reality based perspective. Now, even when you look at the podcast, a lot of it, this normative POV, Jack, like what it should be, what the podcast could become, a lot of changes that come from you. What do you think have been Graham's biggest contributors regarding, hey, this is the way it is? He's like, really good at titles and thumbnails. Game. He has high no, no. technical, you know, YouTube skill. I like to think that, you know, we bounce back and forth now and I've acquired some of that skill, but I think he's really good at that. Um, he's an intelligent person. And of course he brings a very strong audience. So like right. when we initially started the podcast, it's like we got that initial boost because, because of his of main channel. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, plenty of things he brings yeah. to the table as well as I just, I think he's very good also at navigating the conversation in a structured manner. I'm a little bit more sporadic. Like we'll be talking about one thing and then I'll just have a question out of 
left field that I that I just have been dying to ask and I just can't help myself but ask it. But he's very much like, hey, this is how we're going to be asking these questions in a chronological or some some manner that makes sense. In what ways do you think, from a personality perspective, you're similar? You've talked a little bit how you're different, more sporadic, more work when you feel the spark, more grinding on a consistent mm. basis. What do you think was that common bond that drew the two of you together and frankly has carried you through four years? I think we have a common goal for the podcast, which is purely just make the best episode that we can. Mm. Um, and there's plenty of times too where I know it's like, hey, if we're going to lose money on this episode, like I don't care whatsoever, just if it if it means we get a good episode out of it. Wow. Um, so I'm less concerned about like, obviously I want to make sure that we're not running at a loss, but it doesn't bother me anymore. It's like, I just, I just care about getting a really good episode. From a philosophical perspective, Jack, we've had discussions too around how much of how you think is determined by your agency versus the circumstances that have shaped you. And some could say the success of the Ice Coffee Hour podcast was always meant to be in terms of how you two came from different backgrounds, how you met. I'm curious, what do you think, how much of it has come down to on a daily basis? You're like, yeah, everything comes down to the decisions I make versus how much of it is like, well, it's deterministic. The success of this is going to be based on who I am and who I am is who I am. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. Hmm. Nothing as far as like my knowledge for the iced coffee hour has been predetermined. Like it was literally exactly when we made that decision to go all in on the iced coffee hour that it started exploding. It was our decision to start posting shorts on the iced coffee hour that contributed to that. It was our decision to broaden our audience. And like, this is us going against the grain of probably what like our audience expected of us yeah. to, you know, to bring on political uh, guests and stuff like that. So I would say like every decision leads to an outcome and those decisions we kind of just make in the, in the time. Yeah, I feel like anything I focus on, it's going to be successful. So I just, that's been my experience so far that if I give something my all, it just, it works out. Have so you ever experienced what you've considered to be failure? Uh, I made mistakes for sure, but mm. I wouldn't call them a failure. I, I try to see any mistake that I make or that happens. I'm like, how could I use this to my advantage? Like, what's the good that could come from this? What wow. can I learn from this? What is this trying to teach me? How could I apply this in the future? So like any losses I take, I'm like, it's not really a loss if you if you improve and if you do better. Like if this one thing didn't happen here, then I'd make an even bigger mistake over here. And mm. because I learned here, like I could make all these changes and go in a different trajectory that's going to be even better in the future. So I try to think of like, Anything that happens yeah. is like good. Like I got a speeding ticket um, like three weeks ago or something like that. And I'm just thinking, okay, what if that speeding ticket meant that I, you know, avoided a car accident like 10 minutes down the road mm. if I didn't get pulled over at that, that exact moment, you know? So I like anything bad that happens. I just, I like to think there's a positive spin on that. I agree. You win some and you learn some is what they say. Have you heard of the story of the sad clown Pagliacci by chance? No. Mm -mm. So there's this man who goes to his doctor one day. He says, doctor, I'm sad. I'm depressed. And the doctor says, it's okay. Go into town and see the great clown Pagliacci. He's so funny. He's hilarious. He'll cheer you up. And the man turns to the doctor and says, but doctor, I am the great clown Pagliacci. And I think of this in the context that many entertainers try hard to bring entertainment to audiences and others that they themselves do not possess. I think you see this the most strongly with comedians. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams, extremely funny guy, but you have to ask yourself, why is he so funny? What happened in his life that he had to try so hard to be funny, to feel valued, to mm -hmm. become so good at it? And I think of this because podcasting in a way, it's an extremely pure form of entertainment and education and personality. Like, it's not even you have, hey, I'm going to talk to you about interest rates in the year 2023, or let me tour to you my new house, or Jack, another one of your video concepts, you walked 100 miles, right? Yeah. To meet a girl for a date. Like, every podcast, it's people tuning in literally just to see the two of you talk. So the question I have is, hey, where does that impulse come from? to want to feel seen and heard because there are many people out there. They would never want their conversations broadcast. And I'm at a point where I have a good conversation with anyone in daily life. And I'm like, this could have been a great podcast. Gut response to that question was, I wanted to create the podcast because I genuinely thought it would have been beneficial for the brand, for Graham to be more candid to his audience. And I 
felt like that would have created a stronger connection rather than scripted content. That was genuinely where I was coming oh, from. It was at the actually time. for you, it was very strategic. It was looking at Graham's portfolio and where you wanted to take Graham. Everything. Yeah, mm. 100%. And that was true. All the that, way was, that was 100% lacking. So I think he saw that, like, hey, wow. his audience wants this. This is the way to do that. And I could spark this. I thought I could bring that yeah. part out of you to the honest. It was 100% yeah. looking at it for like what is beneficial for the brand. Mm, yeah. Especially because you started off as a real estate agent, then a personal finance YouTuber. Mm -hmm. I don't really think of you as a personal finance creator per se. You're a personality, which Jack, it sounds like mm -hmm. that was always within your goals. What about for you yourself personally? Did you also want to become a personality? Yeah, I did. I tried to when I was a kid. Like oh, I was no one way. of those. Yeah, I have I have some YouTube videos up there. Not gonna mention oh, where you can find them. them oh my! I oh, gotta tell us. So what I've, it was about. I've done like skits. I've done gaming. I've done everything. I used to film a uh, baseball card unboxings, mm -hmm. and I had like a log of like fifty of those None videos. Of this is public though, right? No, the the baseball cards, no. But the other stuff, yes, because I snuck it. The baseball wow. cards, um, I filmed a bunch of those videos, but unfortunately, my parents thought it was weird, reasonably so, that a kid, I was probably 10 at the time, wanted to post on YouTube uh, for the public to see. So yeah, I always kind of wanted to be a creator. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't really, you know, written in the in the cards, I suppose, at the time. But then obviously, I, I pursued this, this work mm. with Graham because I found what he was doing as extremely meaningful and important. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this could be me down the line. You made your first YouTube video at 10. <sighs> Probably somewhere around there. I yeah. think when I was 10 and Graham, maybe when you were 10, like YouTube wasn't even like really a thing. It barely. No, but uh, I had a, one of those video cameras and we used to make skate videos. You also shot skate videos. Yeah. I mean, not to post on the internet. Yeah, but, but like for this yourself. Is, yeah. Oh yeah. You used to skate. I did. You know what? We had a fun one. We put a, uh, a laundry machine that someone's throwing out in an alley and we put a wooden piece of board over top of it and we thought it that would be like you know a half pipe yeah um and so a buddy or like a quarter pipe I, what's the name now it's like the half pipe is the the half yeah, what's the quarter, a quarter, quarter pipe, pipe. Yeah. so he's gonna drop down on that and slipped and fell and his skateboard cut his tongue in half and mm. uh you have a video of that i uh, know we weren't videoing that but that was like later in the day unfortunately but like that's the sort of stuff that we would do not like that on purpose, but it feels like you know, jackass vibes. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we had one buddy who was able to ollie like two feet. It was like crazy. <laughs> he was a great skateboarder. Wait, so yeah. Graham, I remember I've talked with you before when you were growing up. You spent a lot of time on fish forums, yeah. like obsessively posting about fish tanks, making sock puppet accounts to push yeah. your posts up top. So you were also out there skateboarding, filming videos. I'm like, there's yeah. a whole entertainer side of you. I, I didn't even realize you had. Yeah, no, I feel like every kid would yeah. do that. Yeah. Just to be a little Maybe creative. Not. Yeah. Just like the video camera. Everyone I knew like would have like one of those video recorders and just kind of mess around with it. We just random little skits or just stupid stuff that kids would do. See, I kind of like that because hey, why are there so many more creators than there ever were before? It's because the technology's been easier and the desire to create and be funny and to entertain, like that's kind of been in all of us. Like every kid has that. It's just like when we gray, grow older, that gets like slowly crushed out of us because you're told like, go and work like a real job. Although you didn't really take that path. And I guess you haven't really taken that path either. Mm -mm. But what do you think? There's not like a whole generation of folks. Hey, Jack Doherty is someone who's blowing up a lot because he was making YouTube videos from when he was 10 years old mm -hmm. and has continued for his entire life. My fam also, if you go to the oldest video on her channel, I think she's seven years old and she's showing Crazy. off like a Barbie dollhouse. That's nuts. And so now there's an entire generation of people who are making content from the very beginning. Here's the question. If you had kids, well, first of all, would you want to have kids? And second, would you want them to be YouTubers? One day. I don't, prop. I mean, they want to. I don't know. I think, unfortunately, for a kid, it would greatly distort their views on people. I don't think they can handle comments, criticism to that degree, people they don't know picking them apart, trying to like analyze every move and like, oh, you could see her parents looked at her this way. They don't love her. Like, I don't think any of that's healthy. Like I started doing this when I was 26 mm. and I feel like even then it was like tough to kind of get into that. But I feel like I was at least developed as, as a person to not take it as personally. I can imagine 
going through like puberty or like being like 13 years old and having someone comment about me. I don't think I'd do I don't think I'd recommend it. I don't think it's healthy. Yeah. I would let my kids do it within reason. I would want to obviously probably watch the videos before they posted them um, and restricted internet access for sure for kids. But if they wanted to post YouTube videos, because this is what I want as, as a kid, as, as a mm. kid and uh, I wasn't allowed to. So I would, I would let my kid. My initial read when I first met you, well, first of all, both of you seem relatively <laughs> secure, mm. which is a good thing. My read was, Jack, you always came off just a slightly bit more anxious. And that Graham, you came off a little bit more avoidant. Hmm. I'm someone who's a little bit more on the anxious side. I'm curious, in the relationship that you've had with each other, does that bear out? Does that feel right? I don't think, I don't know. I, would, I don't think so. I would say between Graham and I, I'm a little bit more on the avoidant side. Oh. And I would say he's, he's more on the secure side. A little bit. Like, I, I would know. say, like, yeah. like secure leaning avoidant yeah. and he is secure maybe in the beginning i was a little more anxious because i wanted to feel appreciated mm. you know and i hadn't really proven myself yet and how did you negotiate that especially hey jack you're starting without the same credibility that graham brings into the podcast it's a business when you think about how you split revenue how did that discussion go well initially it started out as i had like a i think 15 or 10 percent of the iced yeah. coffee hour and then mm. slowly the as second channel Started the second channel. <clears throat> you yeah. were yeah. You started the second channel. I think it was like fifteen percent of whatever that channel made, or it was like twelve uh, percent of the video 15. that I edited in the first thirty days. Yeah, that was it. And then COVID happened. Oh no, COVID happened. And then, but but those videos were doing really really well. And then I think Jack came to me and says, "Hey, listen, I, I've noticed that the videos I'm doing now, because before I had edited most of the the reaction videos, um, you did the phone calls. I did like the." reaction videos and those are the ones that made like 90% of the money. Mm. So I was like, Jack, if you're getting 15% of the channel, you're getting all of my residual video editing on the entire yeah. channel. Uh, but I think after a certain point, your videos ended up making up the vast majority of it. And I wasn't getting the entire channel until, you, until I dropped out. It. Until I dropped out. It was 50, because I was making about... Thirty-five to forty-five hundred dollars a month before I dropped out of school. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was so. It was Jack dropping out of school, and he came to me. Oh wow! Yeah, because he'd have to go back to college, and like Jack was making like five, six grand a month, I think, at the time, living in the guest house for free. Jack, so we got. I was not free. making five, six grand. I was making. I think it was making, more than that. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. I was probably I, making. I was paying you hourly too, on top of that. Yeah, for like random <clears> stuff. For random stuff, but yeah. it wasn't much. That was probably nine hundred to a thousand dollars a month. The uh, second channel, I, I could bring up receipts. It was probably fifteen hundred, maybe twenty five hundred between there. That was the biggest variance thing, and then the iced coffee was like nine hundred bucks. I thought it was more. I remembered more, but regardless, Jack would had to go back to college, and I was like. Things are just ramping up. Now is the time where I think we got to go full time on this. And Jack just gave me a number. He's like, I, I need this amount to be able to drop out of school. Mm -hmm. And I just need this secure. And I'm like, I could guarantee that for a year. And I was like, if we do, if we have this structure, you'll make that. And I promised him, I said, and if we don't do that, if the channel goes down, I'll make up the difference. Wow. So like, you're guaranteed to earn this, but I think realistically, you're, you'll earn a little more and I'll guarantee that for a year. Because I didn't want Jack to drop out of school. Yeah, you felt responsibility. Yeah. Uh, but but it was also that, like, I had a lot of confidence that, like, that everything was on a very high trajectory, that I wasn't worried about not meeting those targets. Um, and if it did, it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't going to be that big. What year were you in school? Uh, I was going into my senior year when I dropped out. So I had one year left. Graham, you tempted him to follow the same path. Yeah, but you everyone, did. you that was the the early conversations of the podcast. Every guest, you Jack Joe got out of college. And every guest was like, yeah. Not every guest, but a vast majority of the guests were. Had done the same, yeah. Yeah, but now looking back on it, obviously I feel like I made the right choice. And even if I did end up getting a degree, I don't think that there's a whole lot of value for degrees outside of STEM, mm. is the uh, unfortunate reality, right. I think. And I was studying econ, which could be beneficial maybe if I wanted to go to further education, but just an econ degree, I don't think would have taken me where I wanted to go. If you hadn't done YouTube, what do you think you would be doing? Probably law school. Uh, wow, that was instant. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think now the direction of the channel, Iced Coffee Hour, continue on 10 million? Do you think, hey, one day, Jack, do you want to do your more content or that's sort of all TBD? Honestly, 
I love the iced coffee mm. hour so much. Like this is something I have to like, you know, pinch myself every single day. It's like, is this really what I get to do for a living? And yes, it is hard work. And yes, sometimes you sacrifice a lot of sleep, which you wouldn't have to do for a nine to five. But let's be real here. I mean, I can lie down on a couch and I can edit a video and go get up and take a break whenever I want. Like that's super nice. We work hard, but also a lot of the time the work is, you know, it's just sitting on a couch on your laptop. So super fortunate, pinch myself all of the time. I would be happy to do this for the rest of time. What gets you most excited about the types of conversations you want to have in the Ice Coffee Air Pod now, having evolved from personal finance discussions now to very much a lot of stuff focusing on like philosophy and politics and, hey, relationships, honestly. Experts. Mm. Yeah. I, I have a lot of just random questions that I've always asked myself throughout my entire life. And then finally being able to ask them to people that I think would give me a definitive answer to them is amazing. What about you, Sue? Yeah. I like having people on that I looked up to as a kid. Mm. Uh, like E.G. Daly for me was like, that was the coolest podcast to ever voice actress, right? yeah, yeah, Tommy Pickles. Like she, for me, was probably the, the most excited I've ever been for a guest. Wow. Was her. I think I was talking about it for weeks beforehand. Seeing her in person was so cool. Uh, it just, that to me was like, so like to be able to have like, for instance, like Kenan Thompson on. Yeah. Lose it, like Josh Peck. Uh, we're talking Danny Trejo would be mm -hmm. like a really cool one. Arnold Schwarzenegger would be amazing to be able to have like these sort of guests on or talk to Tony Robbins. And I kind of think to them, like, we're able to talk to these people for like two to three hours. H how much would that be worth if we were to pay them for their time? I hate to say it, but like, but imagine what, how much Arnold Schwarzenegger would charge. His hourly rate. Yeah, for three hours oh, to have God. his undivided attention for I think three he hours. could charge... A hundred thousand people would absolutely yeah. and do it. Here we are, Jack and I, that get to talk to like people of that stature and just pick their brain on topics that we are interested in. And we could ask them advice on stuff. It's like, that's so cool. So it's the learning part that appeals to both of you. I think so. When you look back at all the conversations you've had with guests, have there been moments of insights or realization that have changed how you think as people? I don't know, quite change how I think. Um, it's definitely made me realize that uh, there's not like a one size fits all. Hmm. And I see things in everybody that I agree and disagree with. So I, I like to pick and choose and I'm like, oh, this works really cool for this person. This works for this person. It's just, it's interesting to me. So it's like you hear a lot and there's a lot of stuff you're just like, eh, but still interesting yeah. to know. Oh yeah. Then what about Jack? What about for you? Change the way that I think. Yeah. It would be hard for me to point out a specific mm. thing where it changed the way that I think, but I would say nearly every single episode, I have some shift in perspective that I kind of just digest for the next, I don't know, yeah. couple of weeks or a few months even. I like that. It also too, for me, I've heard this joke that men do podcasts instead of going to therapy. That's funny. Because the idea is you can be friends with a guy for years mm -hmm. and you go play dinner you go bowling, you play video games, and then you put a podcast microphone in front of their mouths, and that's where they start to say, oh, it all started with my father. Hmm. And they actually get to share a little bit more. Hmm. The two of you, as we alluded to before, a lot of times the guest, it's like a mediator between your own relationship. I'm curious, what are things that you've learned about each other in doing these pods that you otherwise might not have known? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Learned I, about each other. You know, it's funny. The way that Graham responded to that, like this is the type of stuff that I eat up. And I <laughs> love to think like long and hard. If I could have like a 10 minute break, I would love to think about that question so I can give you back like a really good answer. But Graham, the way that he thinks about this stuff is so interesting to me. It's very much just like, like, gut response, gut reaction, and I don't know. And also, it doesn't bring me like value yeah. to figure it out, so it doesn't matter. I was about to say, it's like, I think it's too deep. Like, I don't know. Fascinating. <laughs> like, if it doesn't bring him value to have an understanding of it, or at least like, like, uh, tangible value, <laughs> then it doesn't. doesn't but you like to it. think about these things. Oh, yeah. I love it. It reminds me when one of the earliest Sherlock Holmes stories, his assistant Watson comes to him and says, hey, like, do you know like how many planets there are in the solar system? And Sherlock Holmes is like, no. And Watson's like, what the hell, man? Like, you're supposed to be smart. And Sherlock Holmes says, 
and you know, cognitive science has since disproved this a bit. He said, your brain is like a room full of lumber. There's That's only funny. so much lumber it can hold. If you want to put more lumber in, you have to take lumber out. So he's like, I, That's what I kind of think. Yeah, he's like, I keep my brain cleaned of useless pieces of information, like how many planets there are in the solar system, so I can use it to actually solve clues, Watson. Get your ass. In gear. I believe in that though. Like, yeah, that's well, that's one of, what I'm hearing. One of the reasons I think I'm so forgetful is because I'm just focused on a few tasks, but a hundred percent. And so you tell me anything else, I don't, I don't retain a lot of information. It's just on like yeah. just doing this one thing. Because the question I ask, yeah. it's one of introspection, right? I'm basically asking your relationship with each other. Hey, how has that evolved? If you, you've done this podcast together, what have you learned? And what I'm hearing, Jack, is you're like, I would really love to dig into this. But ironically, you're fascinated by Graham being like, well, I get along with Graham and the pod's doing well. So I don't really need the numbers to dig are into up. this. I don't need to think about that. Like, yeah. These are doing well. Yeah. I'm highly introspective. And I would say Graham is not very introspective whatsoever. Wow. And I don't see, like, I think maybe we are both a little bit on the extremes because it's like, okay, introspecting all the time isn't actually resulting in any like tangible productivity. But at the same time, I think it is important to like know why you think the way that you think, like the yeah. meta of your thinking, which I think Graham doesn't do very much of. Yeah, I mean, Jack, we've had very long discussions on like free will mm -hmm. <laughs> and like why we do the things we do and like the nature of what it means to be a man in today's oh, Graham world. Graham just tune out. His yeah, eyes yeah, like gloss over care. during those conversations. Just, but that yeah. baffles me because that for me is like the, the most addicting I conversation. I find more interest when Jack is like, yo, should I send this text? And I'm just, Oh, yeah. That, I know, I know what it. he likes too. So I give him <laughs> like a little bit of that too. <laughs> Throw a dog a bone. Now and then, yeah, yeah sure. check so, out this text I'm going to send to this girl. <laughs> well, Do you wait, like what it? I, what I'm Love sensing, that. though, it's the perfect partnership, right? So let's put the goal at hand. Help Jack find a lady friend with whom he can one day have kids who he's clearly going to allow to go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You're approaching this from the perspective of like, what do I want in myself as a partner? Am I anxious? Am I avoidant? Like, what are women interested? You're coming from, Jack, let's take a look at your profile pics. I don't sound like that. <laughs> yeah, he sounds exactly yeah, like Jack. that. <laughs> Come on. That's very much the way that we handle this. By the way, that was my impression yeah. of Jack doing an impression of you. Oh, that is very meta. That is yeah, very okay. meta. I have heard Jack sure. do his yeah, grand save, voice. Save yourself there. A few times. Yeah, you know, I put a little, I'm putting it on Jack now. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's what I'm saying. You look at him and you're like, let's review the pics you have in your dating app. And what's mm -hmm. so funny is I feel like I'm in between you two. We've had a lot of emotional discussions. I'm with Graham. Jack, I've looked at your hinge pics. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Graham, so you're much more task focus much more results Probably, oriented yeah. you're like all right hey let's not wax and wane in the nature of anxious versus avoidant styles just figure out what's the best photo what's the best message to send them yeah so probably. i'm curious then even when it's on the pod that you host with guests like what are the conversations is it just getting practical knowledge like here's how you can buy a house at below market rate like here's how you can potentially profit off the next big trend are those things that spark your interest then? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it, there's a formula to it. I mean, we have like a very basic script for anybody that we could use, like a, like a, a template from beginning to end. And then like within that template, we'll just throw in some personality based stuff in there. I think we kind of have a structure and an understanding of what we know will do well for the iced coffee hour. And Graham's very good at kind of adhering to that. What does well? I would say general discussion, high level discussions about, you know, for the longest time, at least like real estate, the market. Now we know generally speaking, if it's a, po a political, especially conservative uh, guess that it's going to do pretty well out the gate. Um, and Graham's really good at kind of like honing into those sorts of conversations. And then I'm kind of like the kite. He's kind of like the string where I'll just say something out of left field that I think somehow keeps the audience mm. engaged and kind of like drives the conversation through this kind of like weird. Yeah, you have loop. a pattern with each other. So the last thing I'd like you to do is something that I did with my co-founder in co-founder therapy, which I'll tell you is basically couples counseling except it's with your co-founder. I'm curious, have the two of you ever gone to a therapy session together? No. Mm -mm. Well, your relationship is strong. And plus you have podcasts with multiple Harvard-trained psychiatrists. True. So I assume that essentially is your therapy. Mm -hmm. So for this exercise, for about a minute each, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask each of you to share what you appreciate about the other person. That's it. And the other person is not allowed to reply because the thinking is a lot of times, how often do you just get appreciation? which is different from, hey, thank you for doing X. Thank you for driving me to your, thank you for sending up the camera. Thank you for asking that really good question. Not You're welcome. for specific, <laughs> not so much for specific items, but more for parts of them, qualities you appreciate about them. And the other person can't say anything back. How's that sound? Good. Yeah. 
I can sense See, Jack, I feel, is more like, yeah, and you're more like, oh, here we go. <laughs> again. Jeez. All righty. So, yeah. Jack, we'll start with you. Yeah. One minute, I want you to share appreciation for Graham. Not so much, oh, hey, you did X, and that was good, but for him as a human being. Okay. So if I'm going to say what I appreciate in Graham, and the funny thing is like a lot of people would love it if you were just saying how you appreciate them for a minute straight. Graham just is going to brush all this. I, I can tell even even your stance, you're just like, eh. I don't need it. I would say <laughs> I appreciate Graham for obviously taking a chance on me. Uh, that's, you know, it changed my life immensely. Uh, I would say thank you to Graham for, for being a really good person. And I say that in the most genuine way that I can possibly say it. I always have this fear that the people that are going to have some level of like power or like the people with the microphone are going to be spreading some sort of message that's really negative or maybe they're spreading a positive message, but it's not genuine. And then you get to know them and they're actually kind of a crummy person. I can say with extreme confidence after knowing Graham for several years and being observant towards tiny little things that he does, like, a you know, a, there's an insect in the house and he has to collect it in the cup and he has to put it outside because he doesn't want to kill it or the way that he treats certain people or service workers and stuff like that. Um, and it's the small things that he does when he doesn't think people are watching that just has proven to me over time that I can say that he's a genuinely great person. And, um, I'm happy to, to be friends, business partners and associated with him. And I'm glad that he has a platform. Graham, what would you, well, first I'm curious, how does appreciation work with you? Is it the sort of thing that you take in or the sort of thing you're just like, eh, usually eh, hmm, eh. Is there praise and feedback that makes you feel good or you're more of a like results and action type guy? Usually feedback is a one action. out of 10 on the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. That's, that's the feedback that he likes. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. So what does Jack do that you do feel appreciated by? Wait, what does Jack do that I feel? Yeah. Like when he, what does he do? Maybe it's not feedback and like words of praise, but are there things he does where you're like, yeah, this is how I feel like Jack gives a fuck and cares about me. Is this my minute or is this like... No, this is just a freeform question. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> For the record, I won't be offended if he doesn't say anything because I understand that we look at these sorts of things differently. Mm. Yeah, we do. Uh, I would say, well, I, w I was going to say like he really takes my opinions into consideration, but then again, he disagrees with me on a lot of things and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most backhanded. <laughs> no, no, I think that's good, good though. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a good, good yeah. thing. That I am not just a yes man. You know? Yeah. Uh, I would, I would rather just do the minute. Like, <laughs> all right, we'll, they're all going to be the same we'll, things. We'll, you know? we'll do the minute then. What's, what's the main thing you appreciate about Jack? All right, start the minute. I want to see this. I want to look. I want to make sure you're starting. You starting? Oh, talk I, I'm starting. Really I'm slow. Oh, I'm starting. <laughs> oh, it's, right. it's odd. Uh, um, I got to clear my voice now. Now, I think I like Jack's loyalty. I think he has proven himself that he is a thousand percent dedicated to whatever he sets his mind to. Like he's there, uh, very selfless. I think he cares about the overall picture more than Jack cares about himself, which I really admire. Um, I think he's very consistent. I really appreciate that. Um, I think his integrity is very high that he wouldn't do anything to like screw anybody over. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact he's very fair. And that, you know, even if that means he might earn less or make less money, it's just like the fair thing to do. And I think there's a lot of commonalities that we have between that, that like I stand behind that. I like to think of myself as the, the same way of just, hey, this is fair. We could agree on this. Any disagreements we have is, is usually um, either a discussion or a coin flip. I'd say we resolve most things with coin flips. And just the fact that he's open to the idea of like, hey, we disagree on this. I don't think either one of us, let's just flip a coin. And we're, we're cool with the outcome of that. Like we had a situation with, with something stupid. How much to withdraw from the joint bank account? And I said one number and Jack said another number. And I'm like, I think we just do this. You think we should, how about we just flip a coin? And Jack's like, yeah, cool. And I trusted Jack to flip the coin on my behalf and whatever it was. Like Jack could have just kept flipping the coin and be like, oh, there it is. And been but I trust him a thousand percent. Like if it's wow. if if I won that and I, and I won it, great. But if I lost it, I would never question like, did he actually flip the coin? You know. So like I I trust. I I think trust is is everything, and I trust Jack a thousand percent. So a few thoughts. The first one, 
my personal theory is, yeah, you guys are very compelling personalities. You ask smart questions. You have credibility already coming from your main channel. That relationship, that trust between you, I think is the most precious part of the Ice Coffee Hour podcast because I watch it. I'm like, oh, these guys, they're not just doing this on camera. They actually enjoy each other and appreciate and respect each other, even though they're clearly very different, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, despite all, me, man. <laughs> despite all the ways you're different, I think that core concept around fairness, integrity, respect, being, being smart, but being open-minded, I think that's the strongest thing that yeah. pulls you together. The second thing, what the f***, guys, a coin flip? Oh, yeah, yeah, we do that all the time. Yeah, it was funny because I was like, I was... <laughs> I was really hoping I would win because it was stupid. Graham wanted a round number, like a left very the even, number. like a very even number. And I was like, it doesn't matter. Let's just make it so it makes financial sense, sure. which was withdrawing a little bit more money. And Graham was like, no, no, we need to withdraw like the exact round number because it looks good. And I'm like, it well, you better. know, we're going to be losing money because it would be in high yield savings. Wait, why Otherwise, does it matter if it looks better? I just prefer a nice even number. And I thought it was so stupid. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. Oh, who it. am I to argue with that? Right. It's like it's a it's a 50 50 thing. So I'm like, it OK, like matter. we're just going to agree on a coin toss. It doesn't matter. So I filmed myself. I'll send you this video of me asking uh, Alexa for a coin toss. And unfortunately, she sided with him. I just yeah. want to say, that's the yeah. funniest way I've ever heard people ever resolve disagreements. But you know what? I've done that also with Alex in terms of, because so we have like every six months with Alex, we would have like a uh, pay negotiation and he'd come to me and say, I want this amount. And I say, well, I could raise you up to this amount. And we have a difference. And we resolve this with coin flips. My income, and, like the percentage I was yeah. getting from the, uh, the Graham Stefan show was decided on a coin flip. But now in fairness, I have lost every single coin flip when it comes to uh, to revenue to, split to, to revenue splits or income like That's alex funny. i think i think we did two to three coin flips he won all of them now wow. we could have by the way settled in the middle like he we, we've openly said we can meet in the middle but i thought it'd be fun to just flip a coin and it's like hey you get everything you want or i get everything i want and you feel good with it you see the results and you're like i respect the contest yeah mm. but but you know what but also in fair Alex is 100% on board with that decision and would have been, you know, just as thrilled either way. And I was okay losing to that and giving Alex more on the basis of that's what he wanted and he's okay with the coin flip. It's okay. Same with Jack and the the, the channel. We had like a 3% difference or something on the revenue split. And instead of just like, I think we both agreed we could split it in the middle. But I was like, no, I think the coin flip, mm -hmm. this is fun. Let's do the coin flip. If someone came to you and said, I would give you a million more subs on the Iced Coffee Hour channel, like real viewers, but flip a coin, and if it's tails, you lose what you have. Would you take that? No. Back? No. no it's, it, but it's got to be It's got to be reasonable. Mm. You know, if it was you would lose 100,000 subscribers, but mm -hmm. you could gain 200,000, yeah. I would take that coin flip. If it's losing everything, no, because that's... that's Four Lost years. It. Yeah, the difference between zero and a million is way bigger. So than you're literally two. calculating the expected value. You're like, hey, we disagree. The expected value is fair. Let's put this up to a coin flip. Have you done this before? Always? No, not for that. No, for a loss thing like this, absolutely. But for yeah. payment, never. It's, well, also growth it's, is usually exponential. So fair. The difference between one and two is you know fair. smaller than. But two. even yeah. like salary negotiation, that's it. No, because I'm fine with it. Like thing. no, because I think for something you know, if if Alex is working hard and he is i don't care for paying him more but you know if we have a disagreement on he's you know at this and i'm here and we both agree to meet in the middle but we're both okay flipping a coin then it work then it works and you know what and he and he won like three times in a row alex is insane luck with coin flips he does have insane luck but i also think there's a big part here uh that graham has never tried to like nickel and dime us ever like we do sometimes over expenses, like an Airbnb, sure. but over like our income or something like that, like it has never been nickel and diming. Don't sweat the small stuff. Exactly. In the same way that I feel like, you know, we haven't really tried to nickel and dime him. It's like, okay, well, it's fine left up to a coin flip. It's like, I'm going to be able to put a roof over my head either way. Yeah. You the, know, the one thing, if, if anyone ever comes to me and they're like, hey, I'm unhappy, I feel under right. and there, you know, there have been discussions where it's like, hey you did this or you acted in this way or you said this thing and I didn't feel good about it. We talk about it and we we immediately squash it. And, I'm, you know. It's very straightforward. Yeah. Last question. Have you ever resolved disagreements with your fiance with coin flips? Does no. that work? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever tried. I don't think I try. I don't think she'd be down with that. I don't think she would like that. Um. Yeah, I don't think. Because we don't have disagreements on like 
there's there's not like a like a payroll or anything like that. Right. Like usually the coin flips you have are money related. It's yeah. like you know what we have done a few things on. Well, usually like Macy and I'll do like five dollar bets on like who's right about something, and I'll be like, I'm so confident it's five bucks. Yeah, I'd say it's fifty fifty who ends up getting it, but no. I only solve money things with coin flips. I've never solved like, I think I'm right, you think you're right, let's flip a coin to see who's right. Like that's, that's kind of weird. Gents, thanks so much for making time today and sharing this little slice of life group therapy time for the iced coffee hour. Oh, thanks so much. Appreciate thanks, it, Eric. Thanks for letting us use your yeah. studio. By Massive the way. shout out to TriCarat guys, the best credit card on the market. Absolutely. Thank you. Massive shout out to Jack and Graham, just lovely, high integrity human beings who will potentially bet your life on a coin flip. No, no, not lives. But hey, if you if you got ten grand, then he'll do it. He's a better man. All right, thanks so much. Thanks, man. man. All right, let's stop this. Oh my god, why is that? Yeah. That whole portion. Of that. <laughs>